I'm Dr. Ryan Martin. I'm a uh, soft tissue knee arthroscopic surgeon at the University of Calgary and uh, part of the design team of the arthroscopic tactile knee. And so today's goal is to work you through some of the features of the arthroscopic tactile knee. So I'm going to bu build um, my uh, portal landmarking. I like to mark things out with a marker beforehand. I like to put a, um, a line on the inferior pole of the patella. I am a fan. Uh, and quite often use a high anterolateral portal and then a oblique low uh, anteromedial portal. One of the clues that I use is, is I use three finger breaths above the patella at the uh, close to 90 degree flexion mark and I draw a line uh, parallel, uh, sorry, perpendicular to the line of the femur along those Langer's lines. Those will naturally meet in an area that's appropriate for the postromedial portal. Again, those Langer's lines have developed through flexion of the individual's limb, and I have used them um, uh, uh, d that is independent of patient size, etc., to guide me towards my postromedial portal placement. What we'll do is we'll start by accessing the joint. Gaining access to the joint, I've stayed high anterolateral. It does teach trainees that are a little bit more junior um, the benefit of staying outside the fat pad when placing our portals. Um, the, uh, because we're scoping this dry, what we try to do is minimize the amount of debris that we get at the end of our scope. Uh, so I do suggest that you enter the joint uh, with either um, something within the uh, uh, cannula um, uh, to uh, replicate a trocar or simply just the dry uh, cannula. So you can see along here um, the uh, patellar position relative to the trochlea. We're looking up at the lateral patellar facet. I can go along and see the trochlea here. Come along and look at the medial patellar facet. Um, I can come along and stay uh, within stay within the medial compartment. Uh, you can see the medial compartment, medial meniscus, and coming down in the medial tibial plateau articulation. Full extension, you can see kind of how anterior that uh, medial meniscus uh, uh, attaches, uh, and we can come along and see the posterior medial uh, meniscal root uh, um, there with the uh, um, part of the PCL attaching on the femoral condyle. So you can see I've got the um, foot positioned on my hip. I'm externally rotating this hip to gain access to the medial compartment. Um, you know, this is designed by surgeons for a surgeon so that we can do our medial compartment work with, with adding a relatively tight environment. You can see the axis and how much this uh, medial femoral condyle and the tibial plateau is, is um, uh, gapping. Uh, again, I can increase this by pie cresting it, but I think there's also a, um, a certain aspect to teach those that are less experienced in arthroscopy certain techniques to gain access to the medial compartment without uh, directly going to the uh, pie, crust te pie crusting technique first. We are unique in having an offering a simulation model that does replicate this exact operative environment as I would have in the operating room. Um, as cadavers do not provide this same positioning. So any, any surgical technique or, or, or um, skill that I'm going to practice on this medial compartment in a cadaver will not replicate what the environment will be for me when I translate that technique to the operating room. Whereas the whole uh, mechanics of the technique and what I, where I position the scope, what angle my view is, what position my hip is at, where my foot is, where my um, uh, leg is being held, in, holding the patient's leg. This all replicates the exact same environment that I would encounter in the operating room. You can see here that the, that the knees are built with a horizontal cleavage tear uh, to gain access to the examination and probing of different aspects of the meniscus. So the superior leaf of the meniscus, you can see I'm probing the inferior leaf of the meniscus. You can see the, the PCL uh, which would be the uh, posterior medial uh, bundle of the PCL and the aspects of it running down and some of the uh, septum in the back showing the different, uh, uh, different structures within this knee. Anatomic root attachments uh, in the anterior and posterior um, even make it so that this meniscus here has the flounce sign that we often see. Intercondylar notch, uh, again we have the uh, 
uh, notch of Grant or the uh, um, uh, apex of the trochlear notch here. We have uh, transitioned here to the uh, mid arch points, uh, as you can see here. We have our ACL that is competent. Uh, we have uh, the fat pad, which I'm showing you right here, which I'm going to try to move along uh, and retract out of the way. And then I can show you the intrameniscal ligament that tracks just in front of the meniscus, which, which often used and some people use as a uh, reference point for the ACL reconstruction. Coming along, you can see how the ACL runs in, in continuity almost with the lateral border of the meniscus. I'm going to place my probe in here and come along and examine the lateral compartment. You can see the fat pad in between the PCL and the ACL, uh, how it's, the septum is coming through there. You, the uh, uh, femoral notch of the arthroscopic knee has built, been built with certain bony landmarks. Of course, these are going to be variable in everybody, but having consistent landmarks is going to allow us to assess different uh, individual surgeons' uh, techniques on, on, um, on different occasions. The landmarks that are included in this knee for ACL referencing, of, uh, other than the uh, tibial-based uh, anatomic uh, points, on the femoral side include the intercondylar notch, a bifurcate ridge, apex of the posterior cartilage, apex of the deep cartilage, and of course we have the notch uh, uh, to guide us as well. Coming along here, you can see the uh, lateral attachment point of the uh, 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 lateral root of the meniscus. Um, and the uh, anterior attachment point of the uh, lateral aspect of the meniscus. You can see the shape of the uh, lateral from a condyle to tibial plateau. If I put my, my uh, uh, probe in this area and then I go to a figure four, so you can see access to the uh, lateral compartment uh, with the uh, Palpiteus in the back, so the palpiteal hiatus um, and the uh, lateral meniscus. You can see here some of the fat that comes in through the septum here. It's getting in the way, the lateral meniscus here, probing. See that capsule in the back here and some of that fat pad. I'm trying to get a probe to see that if I get it in the hiatus, teaching residents to probe this meniscus and see the, the mobility of this meniscus. You know, and this is a pretty stable lateral meniscus. It's not tracking beyond the 50% zone of this compartment. This compartment is certainly not showing a laxity, it's not showing a drive through sign. This would be an appropriately kind of normative. Uh, probably average of lateral compartment gapping in this uh, figure four position. Coming along, uh, we've even uh, built the ability to uh, examine the lateral uh, gutter. Uh, three views here that are often useful is our uh, shallow view. You can see here um, the uh, when we look at the shallow uh, view for ACL reconstructions. We want to look at our notch impaction and, and the depth of that notch impaction in relative to the, the meniscus. Coming along, you can see the contour of this lateral meniscal border and the, and the actual uh, lateral aspect of the femur. And you can see the popliteus is in this location here. Um, even further, uh, we can see how in extension that uh, we can, we're going to get some terminal external rotation. We're going to see more meniscus volume and terminal extension than we are as we flex it. Coming along here into lateral gutter view, you can see the, the popliteus, the meniscus, and this is where we can examine uh, an internal rotation and an external rotation, showing that we don't have a large component of both e of either antral lateral rotatory pattern or postural lateral rotatory pattern. That meniscus, popliteus, femoral junction is is being uh, relationship is being well maintained in the model. That is the. Uh, um, uh, basis of the uh, uh, anatomic uh, pertinent structures in the anterior uh, aspect of the knee. I'm going to now travel and show you how to uh, scope and some of the benefits of, of teaching posterior access. So we can do a sub PCL. I'm going to go ahead and, and travel. You can see the septum. I'm going to go in and I pop through. 
But as we go into the posterior ostomy of the knee, you can see the septum is to the left of my screen, meniscus is on the bottom of the screen, and then I see the kind of uh, bony cartilage interface uh, on the right, top right hand part of the screen. You can see the relationship of the meniscus to the cartilage, um, and uh, you know we sequentially released part of the PCL, and you can see how we can obtain more of a drawer where that the whole aspect of the knee and the mechanics of the knee will be restored when we can give the meniscus back to hugging the uh, uh, cartilage surface. There's folds uh, in the back of the knee, um, but this is where it gains access to. Again, I'm going to stay within my Langer's lines and in the meeting point. and how localization of that portal is quite accurate. Staying straight and flush with the needle with the interface of those two Langer's lines that I drew before shows a pretty easy access to being able to gain access to the medial compartment. Take this needle out. I'm gonna come in with my, my blade. Generally I like to cut in the direction obliquely, in the direction of the poster oblique ligament. Um, I like to enter with my trocar and then slide my cannula over top. Once I'm in with my cannula, you can see I can probe different aspects of the meniscus, but I, I also can back up and you can kind of see that junction point between the um, posteromedial meniscal root, some septum and PCL in the back. I can push until I hit PCL. I'm gonna fall a little bit more posterior and I'm gonna punch across, uh, punch across there I like to establish my posterior lateral portal from inside out, so I come and enter over top the ACL. See, I punch through here, and now I've come over top the ACL, and you can see how I come through that septum. You can see my uh, trocar, um, how it's gone through the posterior medial, through the septum, behind PCL, and now I'm over top the lateral meniscus. Now I want to stay and make sure I'm safely past the level of the artery with this trocar in this figure four position. I'm gonna keep that there, and then I switch it to 90 degrees, and I lock the lateral compartment in. Now because the lateral compartment's been locked in, we know the trocar is gonna stay posterior. I drive it out, inside out, take my cannula, Advance it over into the can into uh, sorry take my uh, uh, cannula here. Advance it into the arthroscopic cannula and with my wire push that out. Now you can see I see the scope. I sorry I see the cannula. I see the trocar. I'm at, I'm taking away the scope. I'm removing it from the inside part of the cannula. And you can see I'm now looking at the medial aspect of the knee. We've shown that slight PCL insufficiency which we sequence to allow us to do, to see and to expose. If I'm going to show a normal relationship, that's how you establish a normal medial compartment relationship where the meniscus cartilage interface is normalized. I'm going to come across here with the meniscus, uh, sorry, cross meniscus. You can see the PCL is going to be to my right. I'm in septum, just like as often is the case. I'm in septum, and then I'm going to pop out through into the posterior lateral aspect of the knee. And again, looking at that's uh, all septal tissue, lateral meniscus, cartilage of the lateral femoral condyle. 
that's showing that the lateral compartment is a nicely well-reduced compartment, slight PCL insufficiency when we expose it, um, but it shows us a relatively normalized environment. And then if I come along here, I can see the pop Matthias and the septal kind of right there, how the pop Matthias is coming through that septum. These are all kind of key anatomic variables that have uh, surgical relevance and, and we've built this knee in an attempt to not over design it to keep costs down but to also build something in that can provide a very good environment for anywhere from basic to advanced arthroscopic skill uh, technique practice.